example, anytime you're ready to pick a stock, what's the first thing you normally uh, look for? So the probably the first thing I'd look for is I try to make sure that I understand what I'm buying. So I try to buy companies that I feel like I understand the industry that they're in, how they make money. Because at the end of the day, remember, you're trying to pick a company that maybe at this time, it may not be very popular, it may not be doing very well. But if you understand how the company makes money and you understand the growth prospects of the company, you can say, hey, this is a company that's this size right now, but in three years, one year, it could be double the size that it is making a lot more money. Hi, everyone, and welcome to The Limitless Podcast. My name is Theon, one of your hosts, and joining us as always is Matthew. All right, say hi to the people, Matthew. Hey, guys, what's good? Excellent. So let's jump right into it. So today we'll be doing a very special episode. This episode will be targeted to all investors, beginners, all the way up straight up to the advanced investors. I think, drum roll, please. It's how to pick a stock. Excellent. So let's get started, Matthew. You excited? Yeah. Um, th- one of the reasons that I, I mean, we've been planning this episode for a while. Um, the reason why is that it's probably one of the questions I get asked the most. And Very uh, true. I think you wish you had like it, a, 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 a link to just send them, right? Yeah, <laughs> but uh, I mean, at the core of it, it's it's a it's a is it is a simple. It's relatively simple. Like there's some key things you just need to hit at the end of it. But I think the thing is that sometimes I don't have the time, and it's like I, I will try to kind of tell them, okay, these are like some general guidelines. But yeah, to have you know a video that you can just go to and say, hey, and these are just things that we've learned from reading books, watching different videos, just learned over or few and years of experience. investing. Yeah, yeah, all right. A lot of this is so, trial and error. A lot of it is really trial and error. And I mean, you know, it's stuff that works for us. Uh, things that we have put together that we've seen success in our own trades and our own investments. So hopefully it provides value to some of you guys. Mm-hmm. So let's and if you guys have started. any, if you have anything else that you think we left out, remember we are on YouTube for the YouTube listeners and for the audio listeners, we're on YouTube too. If you guys like to see our faces, you know um you guys can tune in subscribe to us on youtube leave a comment mm-hmm. below telling us you know how what are some tips that you would give on to someone getting started investing how can they pick a stock yep and if you like the video guys don't forget to subscribe let's hit mm-hmm. right into it and wait one other thing remember this we are not uh licensed financial advisors uh, we may use examples of our stock like, because we, we like to, I guess, be practical. Like, we don't just want to tell you, oh, these are some general guidelines. We want to, like, try to link it back, especially because mm-hmm. we are more, you know, we invest on the Jamaica Stock Exchange or the JSC. Um, but this video, I think, well, it's not even going to just be for just people investing on the Jamaica Stock Exchange. We'll give examples from the Jamaica Stock Exchange because that's what we understand best. But a lot of these tips are just general tips um, from just any market, any, not even just stocks, if you think about it. Some of it is just, general investment tips you know agreed agreed yeah it Mm -hmm. doesn't have to be stocks could be private equity companies could be different asset classes all right so yeah let's let's show you guys what we thought of as to how we pick stocks so first obviously what is a stock right uh i think that's the most basic thing to to springboard off of it's just a unit of ownership oops Sorry, it's just a unit of ownership of a company. It's just a piece of a company, right? If you own a stock or own shares in a company, you own piece of the company, right? And you can categorize it, right? You have publicly traded um, companies and you have private companies, right? Whether they're listed, that's public, and non-listed, that's private. So you can buy shares in public companies uh, via the stock exchange, or you can buy shares in private companies, but that's not on an exchange normally. So that's not on any exchange. It's not publicly traded. So let's get into the tips, how to pick a stock. 
So what's the first thing, Matthew? What do you normally look for? Anytime you're ready to pick a stock, what's the first thing you normally uh, look for? So the f- probably the first thing I'd look for is I try to make sure that I understand what I'm buying. So I try to buy companies that I feel like I understand the industry that they're in, how they make money. Because at the end of the day, remember, you're trying to pick a company that maybe at this time, it may not be very popular, it may not be doing very well. But if you understand how the company makes money and you understand the growth prospects of the company, you can say, hey, this is a company that's this size right now, but in three years, one year, it could be double the size that it is making a lot more money. And one of the best ways that you can help to, like essentially you're trying to make a prediction. You won't Mm -hmm. know for sure, but you're using your information available and it's best to, I think, use things that you understand. So, um, for example, I think of like... um, I create. That's, right? How does I create my money? Uh, I don't even know if the auditors know how. But, um, <laughs> I, don't, so, I don't even think I create makes money. They make losses, bro. The, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <laughs> we'll be cutting that out. We'll be cutting no, that don't out. Cut it out. Don't cut it out. Um, cut it out. But like, okay, like, think about it. Um, a lot let's, of let's people... Think of like, uh, let me ask you a question then. A lot of people mm-hmm. know Jamaica broilers, right? Mm-hmm. But do people know exactly how broilers makes money right so broilers is also a a company that is listed on the stock exchange right and they're described as having a vertically integrated poultry business so people think broilers will just make chicken and it's just best dressed chicken but they do everything in that whole pathway as i said vertically integrated that means uh they have the breeder flocks right the hatcheries themselves with that, you know, the, the layer eggs that make the chick, the, the eggs and so on, the mm-hmm. feed mills that grow their own feed, right? The operations, the distribution, the processing of the chicken, you know, plucking them and packaging them and all of those things and shipping them to different supermarkets and so on and different wholesale. So JBG, which is Jamaica Broilers Group, they do all of that, right? It's not just, oh, they make chicken, like they, they just slaughter chickens and so on. They they own and operate that entire process. So that's really key because that changes a few things. That does change quite a few things. So really and truly understanding how the company uh, does what they do to get that cash is crucial. And it's everything in that step, everything. So mm-hmm. yeah, that's, that's one example. I think that's one. Because it, how you can apply that, for example, to the Jamaica Broilers example, say... Um, you understand that, okay, they earn money along every step of the way. If there's an issue in a certain step, like say, for example, well, it would Jamaica Broilers example. There was recently this year, there's been a lot of cases of like bird flu. And I know that was affecting um, a lot of the, um, a lot of countries and stuff like that, you know, or say there was an example, I think there was issues with, um, was it fertilizer? So like with the war going on, yeah. So like with the war going on, I think you need ammonia to make fertilizer. And then like, essentially, I think Ukraine or uh, is that a Russia or Ukraine or one of them or both of them are heavy producers of that. So when that war was going on, that can affect um, the price of fertilizer, which if that's a big cost for Jamaica broilers, if you understand, okay, they actually get this, they have to pay for this to feed their different animals, those kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. You can apply that too. Mm-hmm. 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 And then it could be it could go the negative way. So say there's an issue in a way they make money, then that could affect their profit. And maybe you may not want to buy that company, but then it could go positively. Because suppose um, there's a big change in the law of Jamaica that, oh, you will be able to, like they're going to reduce some duty, um, which will help to make this um, more affordable for them, things like that like understanding how the company makes money, Mm -hmm. all the different steps of the way can help you to understand, hmm, this could be a good investment because they could be making a lot lot of money. And one of the things I I think about, um, you've you've heard of like the unfair advantage. I don't remember which book it is, uh, book it's in, but like, um, I think it's Ali Ali Abdel talks. uh, I don't know if the book is titled Unfair Advantage, but Ali Abdel talks about it a lot. It is? Oh. Mm-hmm. So there, there is a, um, book a lot of unfair advantage. I'm a lot of times, sure. for example, people don't, people don't realize that they have their own unfair advantages. So, mm-hmm. for example, say you're a doctor 
as much as say a non-doctor or a non-medical person could do research and understand, okay, this is an x-ray and these are the things. There are certain things that you as a doctor may not really, you may take as granted like, oh yeah, obviously the x-ray costs this price and this is how it works. And this is the, the how the partnerships work at different hospitals and things like that. People may not understand if you're non-medical. So like you as a doctor can understand that and use that to help you to know, okay, to analyze different companies. So for example, on the Jamaica Stock Exchange, you could look at elite diagnostics, you could look at Apex, and there's certain things that you could understand about the industry that it wouldn't, other people wouldn't be able to as easily. Um, or even, I was thinking about a UE student understanding 138SL and how it works on the hall, and you're underground, you could say, hey, the hall is packed out. All my friends, they're trying to get on hall, but it's packed out. The price is going mm -hmm. up. Like they're doing, like they're completely booked out, but maybe the articles aren't reporting that yet. Maybe the mm -hmm. report isn't out yet, but you can be underground and say, hey, this thing is, you know, or a loan officer. Suppose you're a loan officer at a company. It may not even be a listed company, but you realize, hey, all of the loan companies are doing really well. Suppose dollar and access can also be doing really well before the report is out. You can talk to your friend in the loan industry and be like, hey, um, how has this loan been performing? Like, you guys get a lot of clients. He's like, yeah, man, enough clients, money. Yo, we barely money even have enough money. Yo, we barely mm -hmm. even have enough money. Or yeah. even a tourism worker. Look how many Jamaicans benefit from the tourism industry. A lot of people, we have a lot of workers in the tourism industry at all those different levels, Airbnbs, the hotels, villas, whatever, you can understand and say, hey, before, like, for example, before a lot of the tourism numbers were out, you can be underground and realize, yo, the hotels are completely packed. The villas are completely packed. They are using a lot of CPJ products. Every time I'm Dolphin Cove packed out, but the report maybe isn't out yet. And you can understand, hey, this could be going really well. Or you could understand the tourism industry and be like, hey, if they come up with, say, I'm a person who works at a hotel and there's this product that I have to buy from, I have to import and it costs a lot of money, but the guests really like it. Suppose CPJ comes out with a new product mm -hmm. and it's that product that, and it's at a price that is really competitive that to the point that, you know, all of the hotels are going to want to buy that. That could be a huge thing for CPJ that you might understand that someone wouldn't, it would be harder for them to understand or they just wouldn't understand, mm -hmm. you know? Which would probably lead me to the next point, which is like buying companies that you use their products so you understand why other people would want to use their products as well. So, for example, like Grace Kennedy, right? Uh, a lot of people use Grace or even Lasco, right? When I was growing up, I used to drink Lasco all the time, bro, all the time. My, my mom would just buy Lasco in the house. We used to drink it all the time, like a food supplement or whatever. But a lot of people drink Lasco. You think Lasco as a company just go dead so easily? No, right? Or GK or Fontano. All, bro, every time I walk into Fontana with one of my um, friends or so on, it's never just one thing we pick up. We're always any going in friend? there for one thing. <laughs> any, any, <laughs> yeah, any, yeah, anytime I'm going into Fontana, <laughs> um, yeah, like I will have my eyes on, oh, I'm going to buy, I'm only going there to buy a birthday card or so on. I'd come out spending like seven, eight grand always because their products are kind of nice. And they have a nice arrangement and the way the store looks, it's very appealing and so on. And what's right beside Fontana is like Starbucks and so on. But, you know, there are certain companies that you will always want to use their products. And even for the future, they're basically like, look at Wisinko. Wisinko and water. Water is not going to go to style. Water hard for dead. Water is everywhere. The brand has water. I think it's brilliant marketing, naming the water brand, WATA, W-A-T-A. -A. I think that's brilliant. So I think they've future-proofed a lot of things. And so that's who, those are companies I look for. Like if they do have products, because some companies are mainly service-based companies. But if they do have products, you can understand why other people would want to keep buying their products or even use their services as well. So... That's that's another thing I look forward to as well. When I look towards, I should say, when I'm buying a stock, mm -hmm. like what do other people think about it? You know, mm -hmm. so yeah. All right, let's if move you on understand, to the next... if you understand oh. why certain people might buy their product, you can mm -hmm. you are then more likely to understand why people may even want they there could be an increase in the amount of people that may want to buy their product. Agreed. Mm -hmm. 
Agreed. Which could lead say... to increased revenues, increased profits. Well, true, true. Exactly. Exactly. Let's, let, let's move on to the next point. So the next point we came up with is to buy companies with strong growth potential. Strong growth potential. I can break that down. I can break that down into several ways. So uh, one of the ways is buying a company that you could see yourself buying more and more of their products down the line despite price increases, right? Um, and we spoke about one a while ago, like, you know, Fontano. Um, I don't know if you can give any examples, Preston. Mm, maybe like Transjam. So if okay. you are someone that lives in Portmore or Mandeville, with mm -hmm. especially with the new high, the new leg of the highway, you can see that hey, a lot of people that live in Mandeville are going to want to cut down the time that like they're always maybe complaining about the time it takes to get to Kingston. That's so funny because I'm in Mandeville right now. <laughs> you, you took the yeah, leg, that, of course, of course. Any that highway. Cows? No, no cows. No, you're cows, on car watch. <laughs> always on car watch. And your backwards like, drivers. Go, there was, there was a goat. No, Damn no backward goat. drive was there. <laughs> it was a goat. Oh, was Unfortunately. R.I.P. goat. But um Wait, you killed Yeah, it? no, the highway. No, no, not me. No, no, no. My car is good, bro. Relax. <laughs> I'm always on what, the watch. What, I'm, I'm asking about a goat. No, it's it was dead, but you know, it's not me kill it. You know. <laughs> yeah, poor goat. Okay. Um, but it definitely cut down the time to get here. Cause on average as I said, I don't want I don't want to tell you my average speed, but that highway a while ago driving driving normally took me like like forty minutes. Forty minutes. For uh, for our astute guests, they could easily work that out. <laughs> yeah, well <laughs> it took me I'm pretty sure forty minutes is close to like speed limit. And this is from uh you like you come off a of Mandela and when you reach Williamsfield, close to Williamsfield, the end of the highway. 40 minutes, I think that's the, that cut down time tremendously. Because speed limit going the other path would have taken an hour and a half. Right? Going the regular route, like first highway and then come off of Maypen. And then you go to Mandeville and you pass in like Tollgate and Clarendon Park and Poros and St. Toulis and all. Cut out the whole of that and it's beautiful. It's beautiful. Unfortunate for the businesses that are along that strip because now they see less traffic, but mm. it makes things more convenient for me and for other businesses as well, like other distribution companies. It now cuts down the time to distribute a lot of the products demandable. So some companies can actually benefit from this highway as well. So, and Transjam, of course, you know, the owner of the highway, I mean, you know, they're benefiting as well. And they will benefit when they start collecting fees from that mandible leg. So, yeah. Even another company that I could think of, Fesco. Fesco sells gas. No matter how high gas prices are going to go, you got to get to work, right? Because that's what's going to pay the bills. So no matter how high gas prices are going to go, people still have to buy gas. Right? You mm -hmm. consistently will buy gas. And the locations of Fesco are pretty convenient. I, I work very close to Beachwood. So I use Beachwood's mm. gas station all the time. And it's 24-7. So if I'm going home late from work, oh. I can just swing by Beachwood. And most other gas stations will be closed. But because it's 24-7, they're going to get my money. So that's just the reality of it. So I, I, that's one of the points I like. So that's one point on the buying company with strong growth potential. I think another point is uh, for growth potential, it's easier for a smaller company to double its revenues versus like a larger company to double its revenues. And I can give an example, All right? Uh, GK, that's a large company. Or even... That's a large company. Let's say that's a pretty large com company, right? I, I would assume it's a large company. It's a large company on the stock exchange, and we're talking Grace Kennedy here. Pretty large company. If you Google Grace Kennedy's 2030 vision, and we've spoken about it on the podcast, but if you Google, and we spoke about it several times. I think the first time we spoke about it was from Buybacks, that episode. But uh, we spoke about how they want to increase their revenues, I think, by 70%. I think, or 70% is supposed to be exports. 
All right. Let me let me just bring it up. Yeah, so 70% of their revenues actually they want to earn outside of Jamaica. Sorry, just had to clarify. At 70%, they want to earn outside of Jamaica. So they don't have a particular, they're not saying double their revenues or so on. They, they just have a specific metric. No, they, they actually gave, hold on. So, um, so I looked at it. So for 2022, for example, for their financial year, they made about, when it's about 140 billion Jamaican. And if you convert that to US, that's like, I think 900 million. So let's call it just under a billion. They said they mm -hmm. want to be targeting 2.1 billion by 2030. So essentially, oh, it's yes. a, about doubling yes. the revenues. Yes, it's about so, doubling the revenues. But so that's, essentially, that's, it's a lot. When did that come out, though? So they they released the 2030 vision in 2022, mm -hmm. right? The point I'm making is, remember, it's easier for smaller companies to double its revenues. And if we're comparing this to a larger company, so if we look at a smaller company, and I don't know if you've been scrolling on Instagram recently, but there is a sponsored ad that I've seen <laughs> by a company who we had on the podcast, their CEO, uh, Javane Brownie. Uh, that's one great studio. They posted that their profits year over year have increased by 498%. Right? And that's just one year. And that's a smaller company. That's a junior. That's before market. paying on the debt too, you know. That's before yes. the IPO funds. Mm -hmm. That's before IPO funds. That's before, before the that. the listing hype. Precisely. The increased marketing, more customers. Mm -hmm. That's almost five hundred percent profit. And Europe. that's without them even having the tax break too. That's without a lot of things, bro. That's without a lot of things. So much smaller company, but it is easier to to um yeah to double its revenues. Mm -hmm. You have any other examples of companies that can double their revenues quickly? There are quite a few on the junior market. Um, you could look at Dollar. I, I don't know the exact numbers out of my head, but if you compare like what Dollar was doing, like the size of their loan book, I think before listing. It was probably like under a billion Jamaican, but up to recently, I think they're almost at, is it almost 3 billion or so they're aiming for? Let me check. I think it's almost 3 billion they're at, you know. Mm -hmm. Like they, that has grown significantly. If you look at what the profits that they're doing, like at the core of it, it's easier to double a million dollars versus doubling a billion dollars. Exactly. I remember um, there was this book I read with... Um, about it was talking about a lot of things Buffett was talking about. Like he's saying that it's as he's as his wealth has grown and grown, it's it's getting a lot harder to generate um return, like to generate the tiny returns he was getting when he was had smaller money. You know? So mm -hmm. up to June this year, Dollar had a, just under two point six billion in their loan book. And before listing, I think it was maybe like eight hundred million or something like that. So it's all like that's very easy to or it's, it's a lot easier for them to double their loan book and stuff but and as it gets larger and larger it's gonna be harder for them to double it and stuff mm -hmm. but yeah mm -hmm. um and then the other thing we're saying is that to to buy companies that i'd say their business model is scalable so this kind of ties in with the strong growth potential so for example tech companies or companies with a lot of you know digital products i guess they're you're talking more about one great studio again. Remember, they have a lot of software stuff. It's very easy to like grow software, you know. Like that's how, for example, a lot of the tech companies like the Facebooks, the um, Twitter, Instagram, Amazon, those stuff, they were able to grow significantly because they don't necessarily have to have a lot of employees, but a lot of their stuff is software. You can set up a website in a country across the world in a matter of seconds versus um, having to ship Say you're someone shipping furniture, like you have to build up the furniture, hire people, electricity, all of that stuff, set up the furniture, then ship it, then take mm -hmm. weeks and then all of that stuff, like versus just website, sell them some course online, that kind of stuff. Exactly. Even think of one-on-one. -on -one. You don't even have to, for one great studio or one-on-one, -on -one, you don't have to be focus. in that target market, meaning you don't have to have a physical presence there. So it's not hard to actually get your products across to different markets, right? You can be in Jamaica still and your software is sold in 
New Zealand. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I, I do like companies that sell digital products or digital services because that's mm-hmm. definitely scalable. Definitely scalable. Mm-hmm. Other thing, too, is that um, buying companies with, like, for example, a lot of export potential. Which, when you think about it, that's a lot of Jamaican companies because a lot a of, the, lot of these companies that have listed, they have been trying to grow and set up themselves. And a lot of the sites are now set at exports because, for example, we just spoke about GK. One of the ways that GK is planning to get this is once again exports with Cinco. Separate. A mm-hmm. lot of them are saying, okay, we are supplying the Jamaican market, we're supplying the Caribbean, but maybe we don't want to just supply the Caribbean. We also mm-hmm. want to supply a lot of other countries and then for example you have to also factor in our dollar because our dollar like it our price can actually be pretty attractive sometimes with some of our products to other countries you know Mm -hmm. and you said we think less than 10 percent of we revenues comes from exports right what if in five years or 10 years they spend a lot of marketing and they push heavily on export and that's 50 percent what would that look like in terms of exports and bringing that foreign exchange into Jamaica, what would that look like? What benefit would that have on, on the economy? So, yeah, I do like companies with heavy export p- potential, heavy, heavy export potential for sure. Uh, and uh, yeah, as you said, that does come on the buying companies whose business model is scalable. So mm-hmm. yeah, mm-hmm. I agree. Uh, so, See, next tip, I'd mm-hmm. say, um, buying companies with good management. So <laughs> this one is interesting because if you think about it, um, it, it is kind of hard to say, okay, what exactly is good management? Because people might just look and say, oh, these CEOs, when you see them talk at the AGMs or on social media, those kind of stuff, YouTube, Instagram, they're saying things about their company. And a lot of them will sound positive, but... A lot of times you kind of have to look behind um, what they're saying and actually look at, for example, the numbers of the company and stuff. So one of the things I try to look at is I try to look at companies where I, th- I think their interests align with ours. So it's like, okay, if they if the if the company does well in a certain way, it mm-hmm. does it benefits us, uh, it benefits them, and also me. So it's like versus a company that um, the business could be doing. Uh, how do I explain? So, okay, for example, no, you're right. I like to look at a company that the person, the persons are both owners and operators. Operators. So, for uh, example, they're... and they're also heavy owners. So, for mm-hmm. example, the CEO of the company or the, the the chairman, they are like the majority shareholder. They own like a heavy portion of the company, 80%, 50%. And that's a big part of their wealth. Because if they, for example, if the company was to say not do well, revenues going down, profits going down, dividends going down it's a big hit to them if, they, if that's how they make most of their money and the company isn't doing well they're gonna say no 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 we have to fix this up i need my money which i think if mm-hmm. it kind of ties back to like for example why leaching is kind of coming back with ncb because look at that we lead most of leaching's wealth is in ncb ncb hasn't been paying dividends that was a huge amount of cash he was getting so mm-hmm. he's now coming back and he's saying yo we have to fix this up we have to get the stuff i need my money mm-hmm. <laughs> so shareholders need their money Mm-hmm. the biggest shareholder and needs his money yeah so yeah it's i agree if 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 it it will incentivize them as the biggest as the largest shareholder right to make profit and to mm-hmm. generate cash and to pay dividends and all of those things and a good example in my opinion is like <clears throat> companies i like like rpl right andrew williams owns about 80 percent of rpl Right? I think it's in his best interest for this company to take off, right? Whether it's stock price appreciate, whether it's capital gains or you know stock price appreciation when the price of the stock goes up, or whether it's to pay dividends, either or he benefits significantly because he has such a large stake in the company, right? Uh, any any other examples that you have? Any like bad examples for this? Like because there um, are there is a flip I don't side. I want where to people... call. Well, what I'd say too, um, watch out for sometimes uh, the compensation. So it's like sometimes some companies set it up that Mm -hmm. the company isn't, they, like the managers of the company, aren't paid based on the profit of the company. I've seen it 
Some even mm-hmm. some Jamaica stock exchange companies, they're paid based on the value of the assets. So imagine you are a company, you list, you take the shareholders' money, you buy some properties or some um, factory and the value of the asset. So you have a nice big asset. So like you, you listed, before you listed, you had a hundred million in assets. Now you have 300 million in assets. But suppose before you listed, you're making 10 million in profits. Now mm-hmm. you're only making 5 million, but you have a huge amount of assets. They've, so I've seen it where they pay themselves based on the value of the assets. So the business could not be very profitable, but no matter what, they're getting paid. How incentivized do you think they're going to be if no matter if the business is making profit, they're still getting paid and even more? Mm-hmm. Uh, that's something I would definitely watch out for. I would definitely watch out for that. Or Those like I like companies that the management owns a lot of shares. So it's not even just, okay, the CEO, but a lot of the directors, they own shares. Mm-hmm. A lot of the just a lot of the workers, they're buying shares. They actually believe in the company because at the end of the that's, day, if I'm a working at one. a company mm-hmm. and say if the company does well, I own the shares in the company and I can get more if the cap gains or the, the price increases, the dividends increase, it benefits me. I'm going to be way more incentivized to work well and say, hey, this mm-hmm. literally can help me other than just my salary. I mean, the company doing better and pay me a higher salary. The company's share price can increase, which can increase my net worth. Yeah, I agree. So if I was at work or if at a company that I could buy shares in, let's say I have two kids and I'm buying shares for them, right? It's highly unlikely that I would want to leave this company if I have a say in this company and so on, and I would benefit and my kids would benefit from the price of these shares to go up or the dividend yield to go up or so on, right? Or the amount of dividends that they get paid, right, to go up. I want to work and ensure that this company is on the right trajectory. That would fuel me personally, right? I wouldn't want to resign. In fact, I would want to give it my all. It would, it would almost seem for me as if I would it, it, it would, it would give me an extra boost throughout the day. It would be like, I'm working for this company, but I also own this company. So it, it's, mm-hmm. it's a know, win-win it's, it's relationship. A, it's a win-win relationship. Win-win precisely. relationship. Yep. Precisely. Yep, yep, and yep, you mentioned because... something that was pretty critical, you know, because you said management when, or directors when they buy heavily. Love companies, love, love, love companies when the management buying. When you see a bag of buys, you know, Yo, management are believe, buying millions of dollars. Believe. They're buying is believing, man. Big yes, man brother. Thing. Versus you selling. Know, like, like some yeah. companies, I see the managers just selling, selling, selling. I'm just like, what? I mean, I yeah. guess at the end of the day, you never know when someone will need cash. Mm-hmm. But if they are constantly just selling, 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 and then you're seeing them say, the shares are undervalued. I can't, I don't know why the share price isn't higher than it is. Sell, sell, sell. <laughs> yeah, come on now. Come I'm on. Not stupid, bro. I'm yeah. Not stupid. <laughs> but I was saying a good example when management buying shares is Transjam. Because if you look, if you look back, um, and all of the information is public, guys, you can check uh, the JSC's website. Uh, you can also check My Money JA, right? Uh, big up my money ja for always putting out proper data and for also sponsoring us so if you sign up with my money ja uh, you can get a five percent discount off of it use code limitless right so when you have a link in the description yes we'll have a link in the description but use code limitless and you get five percent off of your purchase uh, when you subscribe for that service and you get access to a whole bunch of a whole suite of uh yeah, more data than the jsc gives you if you, you know if you go on the jamaica stock exchange website you can't see i'm trying to remember how far back i feel like it's a year or two years or something like that they really don't allow you to see that much data and you have to pay you have to pay the jamaica stock exchange just to see the share price five years ago or something like that Exactly. I haven't it's, it's used the Jamaica Stock Exchange website. I only use right. it when, when like, like sometimes, for example, the Maimon JA may not have something. Like, I think I was looking at a report. I was trying to find Kyb Simmons, um report maybe in 05 or something like that. Mm-hmm. And I don't think they had it. I think they had the annual report, but I don't think my money JA had a report. So that's, it, that's when I had to check. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I just never use it. I, I've never used Jamaica Stock Exchange website. Since they, they did an update where you couldn't see the, the data beyond certain years, and I was just like, yep, mm-hmm. done with this. <laughs> done with this. Yeah, let me see. Uh, 
Yeah, but, so for example, Carb Cement, I can only see the share price back to April 2022. On what? On Jamaica Stock Exchange website. Mm, so yeah. if I want to see well, yeah, the share price up. years ago, I, I can't see it. Yeah. I just can't see it. I have to pay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and you I guys can sign up with My Money JA free, right? You don't, the, the free version gives you quite a bit, quite a bit actually. All right, but for those who want to take you investing to the next step, yeah, you can, you should consider paying for it. And the thing is, you can try it out, right? What, how much is it? I don't even remember the tiers. Let me just check real quick. Um, so I think they have free premium, which is $30 US pro, which mm-hmm. is $15, $15. US per month. Mm-hmm. So you could spend you 15 US. Month. Yeah, you could if you pay per month. If you pay for the year, you, it's less. And if you pay fifty in US, I mean, how much is fifteen US in Jamaica? Like two thousand five. Exactly. All right. Let's try it because if if you could if you could utilize it and your stock gains are way more than two thousand five, it may just be a really good investment. So let's try it out. You never know. Uh, but. Back to the transjam point I was making about management buying shares in the company, right? If you actually look at transjam uh, and you scroll down on my money and you look at maybe around May, May of 2023, you realize a uh, member uh, on May 19th, a member of the audit committee bought 800,000 transjam shares. And you're like, okay, and you look maybe further back, March 23, 2023, um, and you see, oh, another director purchased 20 million Transjam shares, right? And another member of the audit committee purchased 2.2 mil. And you look up further on June 1, and you see that a director buy another X amount of shares. And so it's, I say all of those things. And then when you look at the stock price at that time, right, that 20 million share buy, the stock price was at $1.35. And that was March of this year, 2023. No, Transjam closed what two ninety on Friday, two dollars ninety from one dollar thirty five. This guy bought twenty million shares. This man is loaded with money right now, loaded. That remember they can double. sometimes understand what's going on in the company that you may not. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so it's always good to watch when management is buying, because something might be cooking, something might be coming. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, what's the next one? The next point that we are going to make, uh, is to buy companies that are diversified, right? That have multiple sources of income. I think that's always critical, especially now where a lot of companies are being hit and a lot of companies because of high interest rates, and inflation and so on. I think if a company makes uh, most of its money just from one product, and for example, the raw material is in short supply, right? Or let's say the company is heavily reliant on, I don't know, gas and gas prices are going up, right? And they haven't sought out or oh, renewables. So give an example like we Or there's a limit to how much they can increase their price. Mm-hmm. Or a limit to how yeah there's there's a limit to how much the the customers can take on that cost, mm-hmm. right? So you have to watch out for those kind of things. Right? A good because example of that was creamy. So creamy, creamy for too? example, they're yeah. uh, Caribbean cream. They're an ice cream company, but they are more budget ice cream. So they're the largest. Um, I said I think most of the ice cream in Jamaica. I think it's like maybe fifty or sixty percent of the ice cream market in Jamaica they control. But they're known as a budget ice cream. So they, for example, can't just suddenly raise their prices like maybe someone else who's at a higher price, different market can. So, for example, mm-hmm. there was, um, there, like with ice cream, for example, a big, um, a big cost in the manufacturing process is electricity because um, in the process of ice cream, you need a lot of cooling for heating too. And so they use a lot of electricity. So when the price of oil, um, LNG, all of that stuff was soaring a lot last year. 
um, that can affect their process a lot because if they're relying on JPS and stuff, which produces mostly, gets most of its power from LNG, the price of their LNG is going up. Mm -hmm. The price of electricity can go up, which could be the price of cream is, cream is raw material costs. And then there were a lot of shortages of some of the things that they actually needed in the, um, in the process of ice cream. I think it was eggs at one point were short because I think uh, the same, maybe the bird flu, you know, there's things like that. And then that once again ties back to understanding the money. How does the company make money? Mm -hmm. So if like, if you understand, for example, if the company makes money from selling ice cream, what are the things that are needed to make ice cream? If the mm -hmm. things that are needed to make ice cream are increasing heavily and that company is a budget, understanding the, how it makes money, it's a budget ice cream company, it's not going to be very easy to just increase the cost of an ice cream that's supposed to be one of the cheapest ice, cream, ice creams there. So you can understand, hey, their money, is not, their money may not be so well. But then if you take it a next step further, the cream has been talking about a combined heat, a combined heat and power plant, which is in, essentially, it produces the heat. It's like, it usually we'll use like, for example liquid um what do you call it liquefied natural gas and it will produce the heat which mm -hmm. um ice you need in the ice cream process for pasteurization which is like how you kind of kill a lot of the germs and stuff and then the cooling um aspect sometimes well wait there's different types so there's there's chp or combined heat and power plant where it's electricity and heat and then there's combined cooling heat and power plants i think they're going for a chp just cooling and electricity but for example if if creamy's costs are heavily on electricity which is heating the ice cream for the pasteurization and then the freezer to store the ice cream if they are wiping out a huge cost for that that could release that could cause them to cut their costs a lot which could cause them to make much more money see understanding the money yeah um but you're talking about like having a company that's right. diverse but always i yeah, I was muted. I apologize. But yeah, no, I fully I fully agree, bro. 100%. And yeah, you're right. <clears throat> so I was talking about a company that it is diversified, whether their products or services or so on, those are diversified. So it's harder for them to get hit because if they get hit on one front, right, it could be buffered by the other products that they, they're selling or the other services that they're, they're offering. So <clears throat> think about companies that are like con conglomerates like we mentioned grace kennedy before right Ga grace sells a ton of different products so okay there was one time uh something was in shortage like let's say wheat or so on is in shortage maybe some of their products got hit but not all of their products so the company is not going to go bankrupt because they can't sell stuff right they have us they're still a whole host of products right okay wheat's down but hey vienna sausage is still a sell all right, kids are still going to school. And they also have the watching. finance side. And they also yeah, have the finance have the side finance as well. Side, so. Right? Because when those things are going down, sometimes, oh, you know, a relative up in New York is saying, yo, you need our money? Send it through Western Union. And Grace is the primary selling agent of Western Union. So they're going to collect some funds off of those transactions. So it's not... It's not just, it's not fixed. And there are other companies too that are heavily diversified. Look at Massey. Massey has several, several. Mm -hmm. Massey does a whole host of things, right? They're Trinidad, when I went to industry. Trinidad, they're huge in Trinidad, you know. IGL, yeah, Gas Pro. IGL, Gas Pro, approved. exactly. Mm -hmm. right? They, call, they literally control, they literally control um, cooking gas in Jamaica, LPG. Mm -hmm. I think it's like 80% mm -hmm. of the market. Yeah, exactly. In in Trinidad, I realized there are a lot of massive supermarkets all over the place. I think they right. own Hilo in Trinidad, right? Yeah. yeah. I believe so, yeah. Yeah. All right, a lot of their supermarkets massive. There are a lot of retail stores. This uh, They sell cars, I believe. I'm almost sure that they have like... <clears throat> they sell a lot or they distribute a lot of... I'm pretty sure it's cars they sell in Trinidad as well. They're very popular down that side. Uh, they have they have a, a ton of ton of ton of ton of things they do. Uh, so yeah, it's harder for them to get hit because you have to get hit on several fronts if there are any economic shocks. So mm -hmm. I do like companies where they are diversified themselves and they probably invest too. So suppose they make investment gains here. 
right? Look at companies that also have their money in investments as well. Yep. Okay. All right. Why, um, why, what else do we look up, look for when we're picking a stock? There must be some other things we look for. Uh, I'd say I try to find companies that they use any money that they raise mm -hmm. very well. So this is okay. kind of hard because it's sometimes it, the mo like you can, a company can raise money, whether debt, equity, whichever way they choose. Um, and they can do something with the money. They can buy another company. They can build up a new factory. Um, they can do a lot of different things, build out software. Um, but a lot of times I try to look back at the past. So if this is a company that's been listed for a while, what, what, what happened the last time that they raised money? How long did it take for them to actually generate return to shareholders? And I, for me, as a retail investor, my return to shareholders is really an increase in the share price. Like, yeah, dividends, I guess, is all right, but mm -hmm. I really want an increase in the share price so they can raise their money, buy their company, do whatever, pay down on their debt. But you always kind of have to look back and say, hmm, when they raised the money the last time, did it actually help? Because sometimes what happens is that companies will take on money. Worse, mm -hmm. if it's an equity raise and they're um, issuing a lot of shares, especially even at a discount, yeah. And depending on what they do with the money and different factors at the time, because they could raise money and then, you know, COVID could hit, um, interest rates could rise and stuff like that. And you sound like you you're talking about it. a very specific company. You have a company in mind? <laughs> no, no, not really. I mean, no, you, you, you sound like you have a, you sound like you have a specific company in mind. No, not really a, a specific company. No, no. But... Oh, set up companies. <laughs> we can talk about them. Though. Because I think uh, it's good to give examples because people can also look back. So right, they could listen to what we said and say, "Hmm, maybe this did actually happen. A company took on money and maybe didn't perform as well or something." So okay, so maybe so Derman Trading, you know, they I know you have a company APO. in mind, bro. <laughs> yeah, no, they're just they're, they're just one of them. It, I could have okay. been another one, but okay, they, right. for example, maybe I'll try to put a screenshot or something. But for the audio listeners, in twenty twenty. Uh, for the that whole year, 2020, January mm -hmm. to December, they made, um, I think it was like just under 13 billion in revenue and just under 300 million in profit, Jamaican, right? They did their APO. They raised, I think it was like three or four billion dollars, right? Huge amount of money. They gave a discount to existing shareholders. Um, and then if you look at, for example, what they're doing so far. So I think the most recent report at the time we're recording is the up to from January 2023 to June 2023. They're actually making losses right now. So yeah, their revenue is about 6.3 billion Jamaican. They're actually made about 50 million Jamaican in losses. So they're not even profitable for the last six months. So if you even look at, for example, the share price. So right now, Derriman, let's see. Derriman right now is at one dollar. They were recording. It's at a one dollar eighty-one, right? One dollar eighty-one. Mm -hmm. The the APO price was for existing shareholders. It was two twenty, and then for key said in, key investors or non-reserved, it was two forty, or the general public. So imagine you buy your shares at 240 and this was back like end of 2020. And right now, those shares, the market decides are worth $1.81. That's down 30%. And this is 2023 we're talking about, you know, that's almost like, that's really three years ago. The, the company is making losses now. They took yeah. on billions of dollars. Um, the question, I mean, it, it's always hard because I said there's different things that go on in the market. For example, right mm -hmm. now, interest rates are being raised. There's a lot of pessimism for the market. Um, but at the end of the day, you have to realize, like, think about it. I think about something like this and I'm like, suppose Derriman wanted to do another equity raise at some point. Would you feel comfortable if you had bought in it's three years later, you're still down 30%? I don't even, I do they pay dividends? Uh... Mm, they haven't paid a dividend since the APO. Mm. So I don't oh. know if they pay dividends, but so even I that, know. so it's not even like oh, you could say they they paid out the dividends and stuff. The share price has gone down. 
would you would you feel comfortable giving this Wait, company your money when exactly again? Was, when exactly was the APO? Because I know they paid a dividend, but if it's end of 2020, one that they declared APO was done? October 2020. Yeah, I think the yeah, I think it was end of 2020. So my question is, would you feel comfortable giving this money, this company your money again, buying shares in this company if they were to issue shares again? Hmm. Exactly. Yeah. So a lot of times you have to wonder what, what does the company do? Like I I think I thought about a good example I was thinking about was Kype Cement. So Mm -hmm. I was looking, looking at, um, Kype Cement. They've done a lot of different upgrades over the years. Cause like Kype Cement is coming from a lot of issues in the past. They were making losses. Yeah. Back in like, I think Oh five, they did a big, they were doing a lot of upgrades for their factory. They, mm-hmm. they raised, they had to raise, I think it was a couple of hundred million US, right? Yeah. And th- the reason was that, if the, think about it, Caribe Cement, for those who don't know, they are the, I think they're the sole manufacturer of cement in Jamaica. Some cement is imported, but I think yeah. there's like a limit by the government, like say it's 10% mm-hmm. or something like that. So essentially they run a monopoly essentially for the cement industry in Jamaica. Um, They had a certain level of cement that they could produce i think it was six hundred and fifty thousand metric tons of clinker which is the precursor to cement there that was their rate back then in 05 and they're like hmm we make money from cement we want to be able to make more cement so that we can make more money whether that is we're exporting cement to other countries but we believe um you know jamaica is going to be doing a lot of infrastructure upgrades building a lot of roads and stuff like that buildings so we want to be able to supply the Jamaican market with cement. So let's take this money and then let's build up this factory so that we can produce more. And about a few years later, I looked at it, I think it was five years later, they were essentially able to double the amount of cement that they made. And you, it's not like you immediately saw oh, an increase in the share price because they were still going through some issues. I think they were even making losses. But if you look at back then what Caribe Cement's share price was versus what it is now, I would consider that a good use of capital because at the end of the day, as much as people might say, oh, Caribe Cement's price now is boring, back in 08, Caribe Cement's price was like $10. Caribe Cement today is $50 and it went to a high of like almost 150 or something like that, right? Mm-hmm. So yeah. that would, for example, be a good use of capital in my view, you know? So I would Those look are. at that, look at the past, like when, what does management, I would feel more comfortable buying shares in a company that when they've raised a lot of this money, especially if it's, for example, an equity raise, um, if the things that they do with that money actually lead to an increase in the share price or increase in the dividends. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 100%, yeah. bro. 100%. Yeah, bro. Those are really good examples. Uh, I think mm-hmm. Carb Cement, Carb Cement did a lot and they are still doing a lot because they do doing some more upgrades to, now yeah they want to increase their capacity i think 30 percent more to, i, I think, think it's yeah. a 30 percent increase in capacity so they i mean they're clearly bullish on construction and they're meeting jamaica's needs they're barely meeting jamaica's needs but they're meeting jamaica's needs imagine now if they, they're looking to export as well so yeah 100 percent, 100 percent. carb cement is like a bullseye uh, example, really good example. Uh, also, I want to, for me, I would also, I love, and this is my strategy. I love to buy companies that are not popular. Love, love, love to buy. Co- I love to buy companies where people are not even talking about it. Right? There are times I or, mention a or company. Or they're talking negatively about it. Or they're talking negatively about it. Like I'll mention, as I was about to say, I'll, I'll mention a company in like one of the stocks groups I'm in. And the man them start cussing like, oh yeah, yeah, pre them full full company there. <laughs> Which stocks Pick up Wall Street. They already know themselves. Wall Street 876. <laughs> but um, yeah, yo, like, you know, we're just talking about companies that we like or companies that we see or things that are interesting that are going on in the market because we just like to chat about the market, <laughs> right? I feel like you're yeah, thinking about a specific company now and you're not. Yeah, I feel like you're thinking about one. I don't know if we, call I don't know if we have enough no? time to talk about it. No, but, just uh, call the name then, no? Just company like Siboney, right? We laugh at Siboney all the Siboney? time. Siboney? How Siboney. dare you? Aren't they <laughs> buying the shares for five cents there? And that, that doesn't make sense. 
<laughs> Boy, but bro. How are you buying so a company? Much... How are you buying a company for over a dollar mm-hmm. when the shares are they're buying it at five cents down? Come on, that don't make sense. Sounds dumb, right? But I mean, it's happened before. There are clear examples with like SSLVC and MFS. Are clear but suppose examples. they delisted Theon. But, bro. <laughs> I mean, okay, I would like everybody to just look at the takeover bid, right? There's a document that's out now. What's that, Dan? Public, public document. <laughs> what is your problem? <laughs> um, the takeover bid circular, right? It's a, it's a document that, you know, what's happening now with Sibony. Basically, Sibony is a, a shell company. Right? It doesn't really have any assets. It was listed on the Jamaica Stock Exchange years ago. right? Years, years, years ago. And they sold all its assets and so on. And FinSAC was the majority shareholder. And FinSAC has already sold the company. The right? company has already sold. Right? They you found a buyer. The takeover bid closed yesterday? I think it's yesterday yes. it closed. You yes. sold? Why would I sell? Uh, that's, that... <laughs> oh, wait, did I buy? <laughs> I gave up myself. <laughs> I drew you up, man. I drew you up. <laughs> Bro, I, hate this. I don't like this guy. <laughs> but um, <laughs> I feel like we should cut this out. But anyway, we're just having fun. We're talking, right? Uh, but I do like Sebony because the company has been bought. There are clear things that are outlined in that takeover bid circular. It's a document that you have to, you know, share with the, the public and the shareholders. And it, you have to be um, upfront with your intentions of the company. You have to talk about the price that you're buying the company at, right? You have to give specific dates and so on. There are a lot of things that are mentioned. They don't want to delist it. So there's that. Delist means buy it and take it off the stock exchange. They don't want to do that. They're very clear. They say it several times throughout the takeover bid circular. Right. There are a lot of things that they actually want to do. It's an energy company associated with it. But they know the a document lot of money. is so long. How, no, how bro, it's, it's a few pages. It's, isn't it just like a few? I don't think it's that long. Isn't it like, is it 10 pages long? And there are only key things that you need to like know about. There's one page I remember reading that just told me basically everything. And most of the, the information that's pretty valuable is all just on one page. Right. And it, it and you, you said... And I, I was just saying that there's an energy company, IEC, right? Innovative energy company that's associated with this company, right? That's buying it. That's going to operate, but probably going to operate it, probably going to capitalize it, right? They don't say how. They say a lot of things in that. I don't want to give out too much because at the end of the day, I want you guys to look at it yourselves. I'm just highlighting that these are companies that may not be very popular and have a lot of negative sentiment towards them. And I think that's when a lot of people should really look at companies like that. Because when there's a lot of negative sentiment around a specific company, and I'm not just talking Sibony, I'm just talking generally speaking, usually that kind of correlates to where the stock price is. Right? It's probably, maybe it's at its all-time low. Because mm-hmm. if things it's trading actually... trading well below its true value. Yeah. Because if things actually go right with this company, right, that's the second it starts to fly. Or it can mm-hmm. fly. Think of CPJ, man. Remember back mm-hmm. with CPJ, back before tourism when they were making losses and losses. CPJ mm-hmm. went from like $3 to 25 or something like that. Exactly. Like, Precisely. Precisely. Yeah. We, we were buying CPJ at 6 and $7. And I was because selling at like Even 18. to this day, we'd be in profit. Yeah. Even to this day, we'd still be in profit. Even at $10, mm-hmm. whatever it's at now. Right. So there are a lot of companies. Yeah, they might be making losses now, but suppose suppose they make profits. And based on the things we've been talking about before, if you know what the company does to make money, and suddenly there are things that are happening that can make this company profitable. Oh, maybe it's this tourism boom, or maybe you know there's I know there could be so many different things, so many macroeconomic factors. Uh, that mm-hmm. can change perception and change. Even the think about the Sibony and the, I, the Innovative Energy Company or IEC connection. Um, a big thing going on in Jamaica now is that Jam- the renewable. government has set out a vision about how much renewable energy we want to have. I think it's by 2030, it's like 50%, is it? 
of energy it's, from renewables? It's I don't know if it's is it fifty percent. I know they give Sometimes specific it's amounts. Like, it's like three hundred and yeah, twenty. I think I have it the thirty. And fifty percent by twenty thirty. A Gleena article in February this year. Mm-hmm. I don't know if they'll reach that, but if, for example, IEC wants to be a partner with that, mm-hmm. or even things like Wigton, you know exactly because they um, they do state it. They state how much uh, megawatts they want from wind energy, how much they want from mm-hmm. solar energy, right? Mm-hmm. Wigton, Wigton, right now, how many people? Wigton are says about they're Wigton? open for solar. You know, Wigton is yeah. Wigton right now makes most of their money from wind, but they mm-hmm. never said they wouldn't go into solar. They've done solar projects. Remember, they worked on precisely with one of the IEC group of companies. They did a solar project, or they did two. Mm-hmm. Hold on. Didn't they do did I, the airport and then they also did this um, someplace in like Mandeville or something like that, like Essex Valley? Yes. Essex, yeah. Essex Valley, wasn't that? No, I think that's in CNT. Oh, okay. I think, I think, I think. But IEC definitely has that connection with, I love how you said that. IEC definitely has that connection with Wigton and so on. And they want to capitalize Sibani. They said it like... They want to capitalize it. So they must have plans. An energy company is buying this company, this listed company. I'd say, you know, I want to put some money in it. You know, like there, there are some signs. I don't know. I mean, the market is slow. That's fine. Yeah. I don't mind the market being slow. Uh, and there's, we could do a whole episode. We could do an yeah, let us know, episode. guys, if you want us to do an episode on it. Leave a on comment Sibani. in the description. Mm-hmm. If you guys, if you, we could we, would, we could talk about it all day. Right? We could definitely dedicate a whole episode if you guys want. Just mm-hmm. shoot some likes and we'll we'll see if if you you know leave a comment, leave a comment for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, any other points? Any other things you look at when how to pick a stock? Uh, I would say, wow. Well, well, especially in this time, buying companies that generate cash, cash is nice. Right, because Cash companies companies can go bankrupt and they can be profitable. Right, not because you're making profits yeah. means you Profit can't go is bankrupt. Different from cash. Mm-hmm. Precisely. Cash is king. Exactly. Look at Transjam. That's a cash business. As you pass through that toll, you have to pay. You have to pay your toll. It's cash. That's mm-hmm. straight cash to them. Right. If it's I not people. People might not oh. understand. So, if you think, okay, what? the difference. So say you buy a property, um, mm-hmm. you buy it for 500,000 US, uh, like you're a listed company, and then a value uh, valuator says, okay, this company that you bought one year ago for 500,000 US, it's now worth a million US. So in terms of your profit, you can put that and say, oh, this has increased in price and stuff like that. But mm-hmm. the suppose you don't have that property rented, like it, and it's not giving you actual any cash and you have a bill to pay. Suppose you took a loan to buy that property and you don't have cash to pay that, that yeah, bill. Yeah, you don't have cash to pay the mortgage. Yeah, the price of the house, has that the value of the property has gone up. But you could just be bankrupt, meaning you could just not have cash to pay the monthly installments or the mortgage mm-hmm. or whatever it is. So companies mm-hmm. can be bankrupt and they can definitely still be profitable. So mm-hmm. you always should look at cash, right? That cash flow Difference statement, cash and profit. Mm-hmm. That cash flow statement that companies are, there are usually three financial statements that companies put out, right? I always neglect that cash flow statement, <laughs> but not always. I, I, I neglect think these it times, sometimes. especially in these times, with some of the things we've been seeing, mm-hmm. people are reminded that yo companies can go bankrupt. The market mm-hmm. is not a joke thing. Yeah, <laughs> companies it's so can funny actually because go it's, bankrupt. It's now when I start actually looking at the cash flow state. I never really used to look at it before. It's now when I start looking on the cash flow statement, for sure. So, and I mean, you, you know, you have to be, you have to be, you have to be cashy. You have to be generating cash so you can pay people, because you have your your you know credit. You have employees that need to be paid, right? You know, you have a, a lot of um, debt that needs to be serviced. Loans need to be paid. All, Especially in know, this time so, with the interest rates increasing. That was what hit a lot of these companies. Exactly. The interest rates were increasing. They borrowed money to do something. That mm-hmm. thing wasn't generating cash. But their their loan cash amount was increasing. 
Exactly. And so they ran out of cash. They couldn't pay off the loans and they had to go back. Like a mortgage, using the same thing. You know, your mortgage has increased monthly like because interest rates are, are increasing. So now you have to pay more on the mortgage. And suppose your property isn't being rented out and you're not making money on it. That put people in a lot of pressure. Soup, that soup. Pressure, pressure. You know, like I put a lot of, not just people, it's businesses too. And you can see it. They're publicly traded companies now that are under a lot of pressure because they're not generating cash or they're not generating sufficient cash, I should say. So I would say buy companies that generate cash. And people always say cash is king. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think that was pretty comprehensive. I think those are... I think we're approaching the O mark, <laughs> but um, I think currently these are just, we don't want to oversaturate people. These are just a lot of things that we use, a lot of things we've noticed when we're buying stocks that we kind of look out for, some subconsciously, some we actively look for, right? Because after a while, when you start to invest and you invest more and more, you kind of first want to your first thing is to kind of understand what the company does, right? And understand how they make money. That's kind of the first, like the basic principle. And you build upon that, right? And all the other things will start coming from it. Uh, so I hope you guys found some value in this episode. If you did like it, please subscribe. We would love that. We would really appreciate that. Um, and tell us what you think. If you like, you know, videos like this where we break down a lot of key topics and so on. I don't know. Maybe we'll do more. Let or even let us know like if oh no, there's anything else you guys would like us to talk about. Remember, we're on YouTube for the audio listeners. Leave a comment below. We'll, you know, we'll look into it. Maybe, you know, your idea could get featured. We'll big you up. So yeah, for sure. Anyways, thank you guys so much. Thank you for being our lovely listeners and being on this journey with us. Limitless out.